All right, so uh, first rule of this channel is we do not talk about this channel. This is uh, Sit Starts Week 5. Um, I really can't finish the Sit Starts until at least Friday afternoon when the uh, injury reports come out. And then again, there's going to be uh, changes late Saturday nights uh, when the rumors start flying about if guys are going to play or not. And then uh, you yourself are going to have to check the game day actives. Um I want to get this out early for you guys so you guys can watch it and hopefully this will help my watch time. Um, and I'll try and finish the the rankings for you guys that care either tonight or tomorrow. Um, there was a good question in the comments I wanted to address. Uh, I said sell fields, I think, last week. I probably did. Yeah, I think I remember that. Um, I, I wrote in the, the comments like fantasy is like uh, the stock market. like uh, The guy's values can go up and down. Um, and right now... Uh, after one week, I would have sold him because I couldn't predict he's going to do it again. Um, there's a good stretch of matchups. I think I might actually be able to pull it up for you guys if you didn't listen to uh, uh, my Never Trust Thursday Night Football. Um, he's got this matchup. Um, I, I wouldn't have played him against Washington because I think the Washington defense is okay. Uh, but he's got this match. Uh, these matchups coming up against Minnesota, Las Vegas, and the Chargers that I think he's very usable for. So I would have tried to sell him um, before the Washington game because I wouldn't have played him and, and I wouldn't have trusted him. But after he's been able to put this two-game stretch together, I probably would be willing to roll him out against a bad Vikings defense, a bad uh, Vegas defense, and a bad Chargers defense. I think that's pretty fair. Um, but again, like th this is fantasy. Everything's going to change all over the place. Um, let's see. Uh you know, it's it's fantasy. Fantasy, everything's going to change week to week. I'm just reading my notes. Um, it's called risk. I'm not going to know the outcome. We're playing a game that we can't control the outcome of. Um, we're trying to control the variable variables that we can observe. That's this what's going on. Um, let's see. Uh, for instance, like I actually dropped a chain a week too early. I didn't get Michael Wilson in all my leagues. I didn't get all my targets in all my drafts. Like I, I just can't control that stuff. Um. You know, I'm not really trying to make content or get subs. If you haven't noticed with my uh, high, high production value, um, you know, if, if I don't find this enjoyable anymore, I'm just not going to do it. Um, I have discussed making money off this in the future um, with with my friends and family, uh, but it's not what I'm doing right now. Um, I, I part of how this started was uh, I make a draft guide every year for uh, one of my co-owners so we can go into his auction draft. Um, that's partially how the, uh, idea of the channel was born. It was, it was already done. Um, uh, so anyway, like I, this is my disclaimer. Don't listen to me. This is all a grift run your own teams. This is not legal, legal advice. Go out on your own shields. I'm just kind of showing you my, my process, uh, that it's, that I've developed over the years. Um, you know, next year is really far away. Like I don't care. Um, I'm not planning on doing anything different, um, but plans always change. You know, uh, I hate to break it to you guys. Like, I'm wrong a lot. Uh, so I think that's about all. So I, I have the grift um, up. Uh, Ron Burgundy, uh, you know, the Anchorman, 60% uh, of the time it works every time. That doesn't make any sense, right? So I'm going to be wrong a lot. That's kind of the point. But this is the uh, the thought process behind things. So uh, news and notes today. Uh, we have, this is kind of a, a larger uh News that I think people are going to make it out to be uh, Chase Claypool got traded from the uh, uh, Bears to the Dolphins. So what position he would pl probably play is the power X into the boundary because um, Tua probably doesn't have the arm strength to throw it into the field. And they could just ISO him um, on the, ba uh, the backside of the routes and let uh, uh, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Water run all those crossers and deep shots and just bully other teams if they leave him isolated. So. Um, I don't necessarily think you have to, or I would pick him up this week. Um, but I do want, would want to be a, ahead of the curve a week if I have the ability on my bench to pick him up, because that's how I would envision him being used. And, and I talked about this last night in the never trust Thursday night, uh, football video, um, where they had Antonio Gibson matched up on a safety. Um, those are the things that, that should be going on. Like you're just taking what a team gives you until they try and take it away. So if, if the Dolphins come out and they're just like, oh, you're going to allow us to take a 6'4", 238-pound wide receiver and ISO him into the boundary, and we're just going to eat you alive all day until you take you, you roll coverage, and then Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle get to do what they do really well. 
the one caveat to this is Chase Clay, Claypool. He was drafted to kind of be this this power X, and he hasn't been able to do it. He's not a very good contested catch guy, um, which is kind of what you have to be, you know, if you're that power X. So the the thought process behind it is sound. Um, the other thing, as I I can understand, is uh, Chase Claypool is kind of checked out. Um, uh, in Chicago, he kind of was not a locker room guy in uh, Pittsburgh. But I could see in this case, like maybe he's going to be engaged if you're going to a team that was probably going to look to throw the football like 40 times a game and he's going to get more than like three shots. Like maybe he's going to be more engaged. It's just one of these deep flyers that I could kind of maybe see him develop into at best, maybe a boom bust wide receiver two. Um, th- but those guys don't grow on trees. So, you know, taking a deep flyer on this guy that's probably going to go under everybody's uh, radar because like they're, they're just going to pinch their nose and say, I don't want anything to do with it. Moving on, Miles Sanders doesn't have uh, any injury report or an injury designation after Friday's practice. Um, again, if you paid for a guy, I'd be rolling him out. So in this case, like he's probably, you know, uh, my RB2. And uh, with the receiving usage that he gets, I think, it, you know, it's a pretty safe best to roll him out. This should be a higher scoring game. They play Detroit and... Um, they're probably going to be from behind and re- receptions have more value than rushing work. So, uh, you know, he's a good play and he doesn't have an injury designation um, for those people that have Chuba Hubbard and don't have Miles Sanders. Like, you know, uh, I wouldn't be rolling Chuba Hubbard out, but he does have a little standalone value. Uh, Amon Ross St. Uh, Brown, the sun God didn't practice on Friday. Hopefully you'll plan accordingly. It says that there's still uh, a possibility that that he'll play on Sunday. Uh, I would not be um, betting that he will. I'll talk about this later because there's uh, a couple of the game time starts to get a better idea how to set your lineup up. I don't know how many of you guys out there have thought about these things. Normally, guys that you're unsure of, uh, it's that have later games that you want to be playing them in the flex spot, so it gives you greater flexibility to put that guy in. Uh, speaking of uh, other guys, Jonathan Taylor's supposed to to uh, to start. He's expected to start, um, uh, or actually, I shouldn't say start. He's expected to play on Sunday. Same thing with Cooper Cup, expected to play. Um, and I already talked about Justin Fields. So moving on to the lines, and this is you know one of the big things that we look at. Uh, the games that have the highest implied point totals, and I'm going to go a little bit deeper today for those that, that care. So the Jaguars Bills have a high implied uh, point to- total. Texans Falcons don't. Again, that's not surprising because the, the Falcons are going to try and try and grind that game to a halt. And even if they're successful in doing or not successful really in doing that, it's going to remove the amount of plays that the Texans have, even if the Texans are able to score points. Um, Panthers Lions high implied uh, p- higher implied point total, but that's a little deceiving because they're only really planning on the uh, Panthers scoring like ten points in the game. Uh, so that's a little deceiving. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, Titans and Colts again lower implied po- point totals because they're expecting the Titans to grind the game to a halt. Um, Giants Dolphins. High implied point total, but I'll show you why. Uh, They're not expecting the Giants to score a lot of points in this game. Patriots, Saints, very low implied point total. Uh, uh, Ravens, Steelers, low implied point total. Bengals, Cardinals, moderately high uh, implied point point total. Another thing is uh, Joe Burrow just came out and said that he feels good this week, you know, better than he has in a while. Uh, Rams, Eagles, high implied point total. That's stuff that I like. Uh, Jets Broncos, okay implied point total, and we'll get into a little bit why. Uh, Chief Vikings, look at that implied point total, 52 and a half between the two teams. Uh, Cowboys 49ers, you know, okay implied point total. Uh, Packers Raiders, okay implied point total. And then finally, if we were wondering, uh, Bears Commanders, you know, okay implied point total, and, you know, the Bears hung 40, and the Commanders, what, they did 20? I'll go look that up. Yeah, 40 to 20, so 60 points, so 15 more points over uh, Vegas's implied uh, point totals. So moving on to, I, I have the other side pulled up because it just takes a second to go up and redo it. So the Bills are five-point favorites in this game, Um, so not all the points are expected to be distributed evenly with all these teams, and I'll show why. So you see that the Panthers are only going to be uh, 
uh, there are, excuse me, the Lions are expected to score, score 10 more points than the Panthers. So when we look at this game with the uh, implied point total, we see that like there's 44 points. We split that in half. That's going to be uh, 22 points, then add the 10. So the Lions are expected to score tw- uh, uh, 32 points and then split that in half, uh, 22 points minus 10. That's 12. So that's what the the the, the Vegas is thinking the score of the game is going to be 32-12 between the Lions and the Panthers. So I don't want to be rolling my Panthers out in a bad, you know, and I don't want to be uh, rolling pieces of bad uh, offenses out unless maybe they're going to be rolling against bad defenses that would be the idea here so uh going back to uh implied point totals you see that the the, the giants here are the 12 point dogs so they're expecting the dolphins to be scoring a lot of points so that's the the team that i would be focusing on um moving down with the the, the larger uh, point totals that I'm, I'm more interested in so the bears commanders uh the commanders were expected to win by six if you're wondering so those are the things that i look at when I when I'm following through is like what has high implied implied point totals. If I didn't already know it by just being able to eyeball it, and then what teams are expected to point uh, to pl- uh, score a lot of points, I probably want pieces of those things. So just looking at the, the NFL schedule, and I'll I'll do one more thing. So later on in the season, and especially during the bye week phase, I'm looking for all the variables that I can find. So like weather can be an issue. And I can show on Sleeper. I think on Sleeper it actually shows. I have to clear these. On on Sleeper it actually shows like the that certain games are played in the dome. That's the symbol. Um, other ones it'll show like showers or sun. Um, so depending on what what uh, app you use, it's going to be able to maybe tell you what the the games like. So the ones that are in the dome, that's a controlled variable. Uh, that's good. Um, I would normally not care about slight showers. I would care about heat. That that's going to make the players more fatigued in my mind. Um, and then, so if I have like actual like showers, like rain instead of like just a slight chance of rain, that's going to change my mind maybe a little bit. But I, it, these are going to be the guys that I already probably didn't want to roll out there. Or if I'm in that coin flip where I'm like, oh man, I got these two really good players. I don't know who to play. Like these are the deciding factors that I I just take out of my hands. Like I'm not going to play the game of who do I like um and because I have a rule in my my redraft leagues where I, I try to avoid uh drafting the players that got me there last year because I know that I might have uh an emotional attachment to them so I really do my best to uh it, you know argue to myself why I shouldn't take those guys even if the the tea leaves say I should so anyway uh back to the NFL schedule uh, Jacksonville, Buffalo, like, yeah, I'm rolling out all my ancillary pieces. So this is a Gabe Davis to Dalton Kincaid week. Um, you should be probably already rolling out uh, James Cook. Um, Jacksonville, all the pieces that I got there. Uh, Evan Ring- Ingram should be a tight end one. Um, uh, I'm rolling Ridley. Uh, you know, Cal- uh, What's his face? Uh, Christian Kirk is probably a good play. Uh, ETN is probably already in your lineup. Uh, Houston, Atlanta. I'm maybe, depending on... How deep I am, um, I'm still probably going to roll Nico because he's a wide receiver one. Tank, and Del, Tank Dell's a wide receiver two. Uh, Pierce is still out there. Those are all pieces I played for. Uh, in this game, they're saying don't don't really play any uh, Falcons uh, outside of like you know your Bijans um, stuff. That this is all stuff that probably isn't going to change the direction of anybody uh, out there. So Carolina, Miles Sanders is probably still a go. Uh, Detroit, I'm rolling out all my pieces because they're just, they're they're projected to blow the other team out. So um, I'm just hoping that my guy gets a piece of the pie before the the the, the fun stops. Um, Tennessee, Indianapolis, you know, I'm probably not rolling out any pieces of Tennessee in this game. Um, they're not implied to do anything. I'm going to stick with the guys that I know in Indian- Indianapolis. If you're wondering about Jonathan Taylor, so am I. Um, I might not be starting Moss unless I have to. Uh, the Giants, I'm not starting anybody. Um, oh, I take that back because of the game script. It's not a bad idea to roll Darren Waller again and get burned. Um, and I, if you have Barkley, you paid for him, you're going to roll him out. Um, but outside of that, I'm not, this, this is not a game to go. I'm going to go deeper into a bad offenses bench, uh, rolling all the Miami guys that I have because of the, the, the they're implied to blow the team out. So I want a piece of the action before it happens. Um, I'm going to stay away from ancillary pieces in this game. Um, especially like if uh, Ramondre hasn't been rolling, I know I paid for him, but he's already gave me uh, a reason to uh, not trust him. 
So maybe I'm I'm gonna bench him. Chris Olave. I mean, I hate to break this to you. Um, in this matchup, how I would feel about it is the Patriots have uh, a reputation from a game plan standpoint to take away the number one wide receiver of the other team. That's just how I would view it. You run your own team, right? Baltimore, Pittsburgh, low implied point total. So I'm not going to go off the beaten path very much. Um, so yeah, this would give me uh, you know a a good excuse to not roll Najee. Uh, I'm still probably not rolling Pickens after the debacle. I don't know anything about the quarterback situation at this point. I, that might not be decided until uh, Sunday morning a- after warmups. Uh, Philadelphia, uh, Los Angeles. I'm rolling out everybody. You know uh, the movie, The Professional. Everybody. Um, so Goddard, uh, Devonte, uh, Devonta, uh, AJ Brown, Swift, um, Goddard. Um, I you could even get cute and roll out Gainwell in this game. Um, Los Angeles, you know, all, all the wide receivers probably not named uh, Van Jefferson. I'm rolling out uh, Kyron Williams. You know, the, the I would even consider uh, streaming Matt Stafford in this game. I was reading someplace or uh, listening to a podcast that Philadelphia's defense has not been va- that good. So that's, again, Vegas is confirming that with their high implied po- point total for the game. Let me see if I can pull that up. Yeah, 50 po- implied points. Um, and the over under, if you're wondering on that game is going to be, uh, Eagles by four. So, uh, cut that in half 29 points for the Eagles, uh, you know, uh, 21 points for the Rams, three touchdowns. So there's three touchdowns available according to Vegas. Um, let's see Cincinnati, Arizona, um, Burrow's feeling better. Dobbs has been playing well. Yes, I'm rolling out uh, Marquis, or Hollywood Brown, uh, Michael Wilson. If I need a tight end, Ertz, um, maybe you know James Conner's always going to be there because James Conner's going to do James Conner things. Uh, Cincinnati standpoint, you know, maybe Tyler Boyd, if T. Higgins doesn't go, um, definitely Chase, uh, Burrow. But like I said, a cute play is to roll Arizona against Cincinnati and try and say like the best behavior or predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And the Cincinnati Bengals have been bad and the Arizona uh, Cardinals defense wall uh, from a talent standpoint, they've been limited. They've been well coached. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if, if the, the Cardinals blow out the, uh, the Bengals in this game. So New York, Denver roll out everything you got for the New York uh, jets this game. That's what the tea leaves are telling me. Um, so Garrett Wilson, I would even uh, in in deeper leagues, you're looking at the the Lizard King rolling him out. Tyler Conklin's a, a possibility. You're you're going Brees. Um, I'm going to talk about this in the quarterback rankings. Like Zach Wilson is a cute play in this game against Denver, um, especially like in two quarterback leagues. Like that's what the tea leaves are telling me. And and if you kind of are like you know you're out of your mind, 43 implied points that are going to go on in this game, and. Uh, how bad are the Denver Broncos? Well, the, you know, they're saying the Jets are going to put up like over 20 points. So, like, I want my pieces. I'm hoping that I hit uh, the right guy, depending on what the situation is. And we're in bye week phase, so there's these holes that I have to roll out guys that I would normally not want to be rolling out. Uh, Chiefs Vikings, again, really high implied point total. So, uh, Rasheed Rice, where are they at? Rasheed Rice. You know, uh, Sky Moore, um, I'm going to talk about like Noah Gray, uh, the backup tight end for the Chiefs. Like if you're really desperate, um, he's a guy that could get you a deep catch or a, a touchdown. And that sometimes that's all we're gambling for. You know, all of my my Minnesota guys like KJ Osborne in deeper leagues because of the routes that he's running, um, you know, how what his uh, snap share is. Like those are the things I'm looking at, like when I'm looking at like deeper flyers to be throwing out there, depending on your league size. Uh, Dallas and San Francisco, I'm rolling out everybody. That means like Brandon Cooks could get a chance. Like I, San Francisco may be a good defense and someone brought this up and I thought this was interesting. Um, so San Francisco, they, they haven't really faced, um, a, a good deep or a good offense so far besides the Rams. The Rams might be a good offense and, and, um, they put up some point like the Cardinals put, hung 16 on them. So like, this is their first real test of a real offense um, and they're probably going to have to get into a little bit more of a fight than they've been uh, looking forward to. So it's it's not saying, hey, San Francisco's defense is bad. It's actually saying that, like, I, I would I, I would guess that the uh, Cowboys are going to be good. 
And if they're going to score points, they may not be the conventional route going to Tony Pollard or CD Lamb. Um, Jake Ferguson, the tight end, is a sneaky play. Um, he should already be a, a starting uh, tight end, but depend based off his draft capital, um, he may not be a starter in all leagues. Uh, but again, trying to figure out ways how the Cowboys would beat the 49ers. Um, and then the Green Bay Las Vegas game. Um, I'm I like the the chances of the Green Bay weapons paying off. Luke Musgraves, another guy I've been talking about all year. I'm rolling out my pieces. Um in the green Bay game, probably not always going to know which of the, uh, the weapons are going to pay off and Vegas. I ha I don't know anything about Jimmy G yet. Um, so, you know, those, those, those might be game day stuff, but those are, those are the implied point totals of what's going on. And it's been about 20 minutes and I don't want it to be any longer. So hopefully this will help you set your lineups.